Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to this channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are going to go over overhead reaching or how to regain the ability to lift your arm up to reach into a cabinet. This has come up a few times in the comments recently with some people mentioning some very specific problems that they think are leading to their inability to lift their arm. So I wanted to address some of those problems, talk a little bit about what normal mechanics of the shoulder looks like and feels like, and then go into some solutions to address some of the root cause problems that might be contributing to your inability to relearn this specific shoulder movement. But before we dive into that, if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and dive in. So as I mentioned, first let's just talk about normal shoulder mechanics. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, just some big picture things that are important to understand about everything that's involved in this upper quadrant region to enable someone to reach the arm above shoulder height. So to reach overhead is not just about the humerus or the arm bone moving. There's actually multiple moving parts. So in addition to the arm bone or the humerus lifting or coming forward, you also have the shoulder blade or the big flat bone on the back of the shoulder that actually rotates upward and backwards slightly. You have the thoracic spine, which extends. So normally the thoracic spine is a little bit of what we call kyphotic. So it's a little bit rounded with the concave part facing forward and to have full shoulder range of motion that part of the spine needs to flatten out a little bit and in addition to that the arm bone needs to externally rotate so that is a critical component and not necessarily in my experience because someone has weakness in the muscles that externally rotate the shoulder but there's actually muscles pulling the arm in the opposite direction so actually internally rotating the shoulder that is making it more challenging to raise that arm up so that's one of the biggest reasons for this video that we're going to get into in a little bit So now that we understand normal mechanics of the shoulder, I'm going to go into some big picture kind of movement problems that can happen if you have damage to your brain or your spinal cord. One is spasticity. You guys know that's one of my favorite words. I talk about it in a lot of videos because it is such a big problem and spasticity is just overactivity. So there's certain muscles in this upper region right here that are overactive or involuntarily contracting at the most in ideal times, most of the time, as most of you already know and experience. But the big culprits that interfere with normal shoulder movement are muscles that bend the elbow. So some of the bicep muscles actually cross the shoulder joint as well. So that's important to know if you have spasticity in your bicep and your arm is curling up, that does interfere with shoulder movement a little bit. There's also this little muscle called the coracobrachialis that I think is probably overactive. I haven't looked in any of the data and of course I don't have the machinery to actually test that in a therapy session, but I'm pretty sure that that muscle is probably overactive most of the time, as well as the pec major, the pec minor, and the latissimus. And generally speaking, most of the muscles that I just mentioned all internally rotate the shoulder. Now, this is gonna be important, but the problem really is that some of those muscles also raise the arm. And the reason that's a problem is if they're overactive, they kick in really early and they almost interfere with that external rotation, which is one reason why you might have trouble getting your arm up past a certain point in that range of motion or in that arc. The other big problem for a variety of reasons, and again, there's a lot of overlap, so there's probably a little bit of all of this going on with a lot of you, is tightness or muscles are just short for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's just because it's immobile and it hasn't moved a whole lot. Sometimes it's because of how they had you positioned in the hospital. Sometimes it's because someone recommended a sling and so you wore a sling. Many times, and this is something that I 
see quite a bit is that you fell and broke your arm after your stroke and they decided to treat that conservatively and so they basically just put you in a sling and kept your arm there and so that kept the arm internally rotated and kind of glued to your side. Sometimes the muscles are shorter just because of neglect so your whole body is kind of rotated toward your uninvolved side and so of course all those muscles are just going to adaptively shorten making it harder to get that shoulder blade back and rotating upward because it has all that resistance pulling it forward and those are just a few of the reasons i can think of but the main muscles that usually become tight because of a variety of different scenarios that can happen are the bicep the pec major, which rotates that arm inward, the pec minor, which brings that shoulder blade forward, the latissimus, which also internally rotates that arm, the subscap is usually a little bit tight, and so that also internally rotates the arm. As you can see, there are a lot of muscles that are involved with overhead reaching and or become dysfunctional and interfere with overhead reaching after any type of damage to your brain or spinal cord in the areas of the brain or the spinal cord that control arm movement. And then there's one final category, which is actually what came up in the comments that someone had mentioned that their external rotators were weak or not working. And I would say underactive muscles, although there are a lot of underactive muscles, is probably one of the least common reasons that someone can't lift their arm. The majority of the reason is because of everything else that I just talked about. But it also got me thinking that in the comments, a lot of times I see things where people are just saying one specific thing. Like a therapist told them this was weak or this was tight. And so that's what they go online and they look for exercises for. And I even sometimes do that because I get hyper-focused on one specific area with a patient. But it's important to understand that the brain and the spinal cord is, they're kind of like a control tower, you know, an airport. And a control tower at an airport is controlling multiple things. It's got to keep multiple planes in the air, make sure they don't hit each other, things like that. And it's almost dangerous if that control tower were to just focus on one plane and kind of neglect all the other planes. And it's kind of similar with retraining your brain or rewiring your brain. If you get too hyper-focused on one thing, it's probably not going to be as effective as if you looked at this more globally. I do it sometimes too, so I completely get it. But it's important to understand that you got to keep looking at the big picture. So when I talk to students, I talk about it this way. You got to zoom in, but you also got to zoom out. And it's a constant balance between zooming in and zooming out, focusing in on one area and then putting it in the context of a bigger picture and the other problems that might be going on. So that's just a little side note, but it is important not to get too hyper-focused if a therapist kind of gives you one specific problem. There's probably multiple things going on. So now that we understand kind of some of the problems that might be interfering and what we're trying to achieve, which is that first part of what normal mechanics of the shoulder look like, what are some of the solutions? Most of the time, I like to get a lot of bang for the buck. So selecting exercises where you're stretching multiple things and where you can address multiple muscles or many of the problems that I just discussed in one exercise. So the first exercise that I really, really like, and I posted it on Instagram last week, but I'm going to put it in this video because I just think it's so valuable. And actually a couple people commented that this is part of their home exercise routine, but it's just a way to open up the chest. So you're going to put your hands on your sitting surface and then try and scoot down to a stool, keeping your arms up on a sitting surface. So what we're trying to do with this one is you're trying to open your chest up. That stretches the pec major, the pec minor, and a lot of the other muscles that are pulling that shoulder forward. Now to also make sure that the you're getting the internal rotators so remember i said those are kind of tight is when you do this you want to make sure that your elbow does not flail out to the side but you're just going to scoot down and just hold it remember these are stretches so you're literally just going to hold it 30 seconds to a minute minimum <laughs> also working on that thoracic extension and stretching that bicep a little bit as well. The other stretch I like is technically kind of what they call a latissimus stretch, but it's really targeting several of the muscles that rotate the arm inward 
and keep the arm glued to your side or pull the arm backwards. Now the dowel rod's really important. I've showed this stretch before and people have asked in the comments, is the dowel rod important? And yes, the dowel rod is extremely important. It keeps your shoulders externally rotated, which is really what you want. And you're going to sit and prop your elbows up on a chair in front of you, or you could do it on a dining room table. Strap the one arm to the dowel rod if you need to, and then you're just going to kind of relax your chest forward or let your chest kind of fall towards your knees. And again, you wanna hold this for 30 seconds to a minute minimum. Now, the next stretch that I think is really, really important is this dowel rod stretch that I have showed in other videos. It really stretches out the bicep muscle, which for m many people is either overactive or it has shortened. It also targets those pecs. So again, we're getting multiple muscles that could be interfering or causing resistance to you being able to get the normal mechanics back in the shoulder. So love this one. Again, I have showed this one in other videos, but I do think it's really, really important. So strapping that hand again to a dowel rod. You could also use your cane. I do like using a strap, even if your hand involuntarily clenches around things. We're trying to get the arm to relax. If you put something in your hand and you have that involuntary contraction, you don't wanna kind of encourage that. So by strapping your arm to it, there's a chance that the rest of the arm might relax. So definitely, even if you have voluntary clenching, I recommend strapping your hand to a dowel rod or a cane. So now we're gonna get into the next category, which is how do you inhibit some of the key players that are overactive or just contracting all the time? It really takes setting yourself up in the right environment and really focusing on relax. You gotta learn how to relax the overactive muscles in most cases before you're really gonna be able to set yourself up for success and relearn that reaching movement. So we're trying to learn how to relax the muscles that pull that arm inward or rotate that arm inward. I love this cane exercise. I've shown this one before in other videos, but it is definitely worth showing again. And you're basically just going to rest your hand on a quad cane. I've used a Swifter and some people have posted videos of that. It's you have to be a little bit of an engineer to figure out how to set the Swifter up right, but a Swifter works really well because it's got like a pivot on the top. So anyway, it's a good platform for your hand. And you're basically just going to let the arm fall. You're going to work on letting the hand fall. If the cane flies across your body in front of your body, that means those muscles are really overactive, the internal rotators. So one way you can set it up is just angle the cane outward a little bit, and then you can use gravity to kind of relearn how to let those muscles relax. And then the final category is how do you isolate shoulder flexion or lifting the arm up while discouraging the elbow flexors the arm internal rotators, and the arm muscles that pull the arm backwards, which are the lats. So how do you encourage and set yourself up for success for overhead reaching and discourage a lot of those overactive muscles? I use a ton of tools. So the Pilates ring I've used before, but it is critical. Um, when you strap your hands to the Pilates ring, it helps to stop the arm from internally rotating. In the very beginning, you're probably gonna have to stop the arm from internally rotating and the elbow from flexing. So then I would put an elbow mobilizer on as well as strapping your hand to the Pilates ring and then just work on overhead reaching. If you can have someone video it to see if your shoulders are coming up, you really want your shoulders to stay down on the mat. I really recommend doing this laying down. It just automatically puts the shoulder blade in a little bit of a better position. You can also see that gravity kind of automatically flattens out that thoracic spine. So that's another reason why it's good in the early stages to do this exercise laying down. And then you can take this one step further. This would be really challenging, but really to isolate that external rotation and really discourage the lats from kicking in, you can switch to a dowel rod and that really externally rotates your shoulders and also work on that overhead reaching. Now, if you're someone where your elbow immediately comes out to the side every time you go to lift your arm, these exercises are critical. You could do this all day long, 
but try not to rush through these. Do this as much as you need to. There is no magic number, as you guys heard me talk about last week, but it's super, super critical to really give your body, give your brain a chance to learn these movements before going on to the more difficult versions. So the next progression would be to do these same exercises sitting up, which is really challenging. So stay here as long as you need to. And that is it for this video. Again, if you guys aren't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. I don't know if this is normal for YouTube channels, but it really is shocking to me that 60% of the views are from people that are not subscribed. So if you are a regular viewer, I really encourage you to hit that subscribe button. It really does help this channel in the algorithm and it really does help these videos to reach more people. So help me to help more people hit that subscribe button. If you like this video and you like these shoulder exercises, exercises, give this video a thumbs up. The videos that get the most likes and the most engagement are usually the videos where I will try and do a follow-up video with similar content. If you have any questions, as usual, leave those in the comments below. I also now offer a membership program here on YouTube where I'm going to be doing monthly lives. Right now there's a very small group of members, so it's a good time to get in on that membership you pretty much will have my undivided attention for 30 to 45 minutes. The first live is going to be in November. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper and you want more specific answers to some of your questions, I highly encourage you to join that membership program so that you can participate in those live Q&A sessions. That is it for this video. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you all in the next video.